Hey guys, Bill Nichols, Bill Nichols TV, here today with a tutorial in Photoshop on how to do some advanced cloning for some pictures where you might have a really hard time with the stamp tool or the content to wear fill or others. So stick with me, let's jump through it. All right, so if you've ever been using Photoshop and you've got something like maybe a landscape image or um, an interior image or something where you wanted to clone something out, but the background isn't even. So it's a gradient, the values change, and you had a hard time cloning that out because you could really see that transition where you clone it out. I'm gonna run you through today how I do it. A really quick, simple process. Seems a little complicated at first, but stick with me, it's really easy. We're gonna use a few tools today. I'm gonna name them right now, tell you what the keyboard shortcuts are or how you get to them, and then I'll reinforce those in the video. So today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna use the lasso tool. So probably the polygon lasso or the freeform lasso. We're gonna use a, we're gonna use a lasso, we're gonna create some new layers. We're gonna go in to get into a layer mask, and we're gonna use the gradient tool, and then a brush to affect that um, layer mask. And that's it. So let's jump right in. I've got two images, so two different scenarios that I'm going to run you through. This is going to be really quick, and I'm going to tell you what's going to come up in the next week. And so we're here in Photoshop. So I've got this interior architecture shot. Um, pretty simple. One point perspective. We're looking straight in here. And um, there's a couple of things with this image that I would improve um, before I deliver this to a client typically. Now a shot like this might be for a real estate listing. So if that was the case in this one, I probably wouldn't change any of this. But this particular shot is getting delivered to the original architect. So there's some things that maybe the architect didn't make a choice in or some things that I want to clean up so it really shows their design that they've done and, um, and showcases that and doesn't let the eye get distracted. So I'll tell you what those couple things are and we're gonna change one of them, which is the biggest one. So right away, I'd probably get rid of this little button down here on the counter. Um, and maybe this light switch here, maybe not. But the biggest thing that's affecting this image to me is right up here, this pendant light along with this vent. So I hate these vents. So this pendant light actually looks like it's right over the stove and it's not, it's over the counter over here, but because of the wide angle perspective, it's a little bit off. So we're gonna take that out, you won't even miss it. And then this um, grate here. A lot of times when I'm retouching interior architectural images, I will take out the things that the architect wasn't responsible for if I'm delivering images to the original architect or the original architecture firm. In this case, the architect didn't necessarily make the choice of this grate that's here. So I wanna get rid of that and just show these nice clean lines. So in Photoshop, there's a couple of ways that I could do this. I'm gonna run through the ways that you might normally do this and then I'm running through the way that I do this. So right away in this area, you can see that we've got um, this nice gradient that's going from here. So part of it's from this light. This is lighter here than it is dark up here. So if I was to go and use the, try and use the stamp tool. So I just pressed S to get to the clone stamp tool. Now I've got this. So the way the clone stamp tool works is on a PC, you press Alt on a um, Mac, you choose option. I hold down option to sample somewhere. Then I come in and I paint over. And I've got the opacity, or oh, right now I've got it set to lighten. So let's go to normal. So if you go to normal, hold down Alt, sample an area, and whatever I paint right here is gonna get rid of it. Now, this can look pretty good, but I'm gonna show you some issues for when I do this. And actually, on this one in particular, it's not, well, it's not great. I'll show you what I mean by not great. This is very simple, very quick. Um, let's sample again over here. Actually, that isn't bad, but I'm going to show you what you would do. Uh, I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot here. That one actually looks pretty good, but let's jump back through the history. I'm going to show you another way that you would do this, and then the way that I do this in typical interiors. Now, typically when I'm going to use the method that I'm going to show you, it's going to be over a much larger area. I'll show that in the second image. So that's one way. So you, you, get, this, you get the stamp tool. Then you clone an area and then you keep on iterating that area that you're sampling by pressing clone and pressing the, the mouse button to sample the new area. And you can get those. Uh, this isn't a really heavy gradient, but in an area where there's a gradient, what you'll end up with a lot of times is a line here um, where you can clearly see what, uh, what you were doing and you can see that something was cloned out. Another way to do this would be use something like the marquee tool. Just select around it, hit shift delete. So that's shift and delete. And it comes up and it's asking you, what do you want to fill that area with that you're deleting? And we're going to say content aware, and that's going to make Photoshop evaluate the area, and then it's going to replace it. This works really well in a lot of cases, but I haven't tried it on this particular image, but I think it's going to mess up the clone. 
it is. So you can see overall it did a pretty good job. It got rid of all that, it replaces that in there. But then you can see like, obviously this light is still here and these lines, but you can see like this kind of haze here. That's what you get a lot in areas that have some gradient or some change in tonal values and you're using content or wear fill is that a Photoshop isn't going to quite do it correctly. Now I can manipulate this selection and probably get in here a little bit tighter. It'll do a pretty good job. But what I wanna show you is a way to do these clones with using gradients and layer masks and how flexible this is and how quick it is. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna just go and create a new layer. I'm just gonna call this clone. And in here, I'm going to select around this, but I wanna select around it a bit larger than it because I'm gonna create a mask and then fix that. So I'm gonna get kind of the same general shape here, just stay kind of wide around it. The reason I'm doing that is that I don't want it to be real obvious when I do this. So now I've got the selection, it's around this part of the image. And um, in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a fill. So I'm going to fill this. So I'm gonna use the gradient tool and I can do that by selecting the gradient tool right here or I can press G. Then I wanna go up here and make sure that in this particular image that I just have this regular straight, straight uh, linear gradient selected. Then I'm gonna open this gradient editor up I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna find my lightest value, which is like here. I'm gonna go find the darkest value, which is up here. And so now we have this gradient. It's not much of a gradient. And then um, one thing that I like to do is, here's the kind of marching ants going through. I like to hide those. You do that by pressing Command H. So this way I can really see what it's gonna look like. And I'm just gonna draw that gradient and try and get something, like this matches really well down here, but not so well over here try and find something that gets pretty close. So just have to kind of mess around. Let's see, let's go from here to here. So actually that's pretty close. So right now, that doesn't look great at all, right? So you can clearly see it. The object is gone, I've now created this gradient. Now the couple of things that I need to do, I need to add some noise to that color that I just put in there so that it matches the texture of the rest of the image. And then I'm going to create a layer mask of this and then I'm gonna eat away at that mask to hide this part of the gradient. But overall, like you can see down here, it matches really well and it matches pretty well tonally through here. And I just did that by kind of redrawing the gradient each time. So I would hold down the mouse button, draw the gradient. I didn't like that, I'd draw it again, draw it again until I got pretty close. Let me show you why we need to add some noise. If I get in here in the image, you can see that my color patch here, nice and smooth, no noise. If you look over here, there's just some noise from the digital image. So I'm on that background right now. I have clone selected, and uh, I'm in that layer, not that background. So I have the clone layer selected. I'm gonna go here to filter, noise, and add noise. And what I wanna do, let's crank this way up. Obviously that's too much noise, right? So I make sure that uniform is selected, and I'm just gonna bring it down. 30 is clearly way too much. Seven is way too much. So let's go, usually I do this somewhere around one and a half or so. Good, so right there. So actually one and a half is a bit much. You see they're getting closer, but there's still too much here. So let's just go like one and a quarter. And right there, so that amount of noise in there looks pretty similar to this. So you can see that they look a lot more consistent with each other. Just gives me some texture. Now I can zoom back out a little bit. And what that's gonna do now is that's not just gonna look like this smooth patch of color that's in there. So now we've got rid of the object, we've put a gradient in there, and now I need a way to blend this in. It's so the way that I'm gonna do that is with a layer mask. So I've got the clone layer selected. I'm gonna come right down here to this layer mask, hit that, and now you'll see in the mask, the everything is hidden except for that one part right there. So now what I wanna do is I wanna hide the edge of this gradient, and you can see that the layer mask is white and black. If it's black on here, it's hidden, if it's white, then it appears. So what I wanna do is I grab my brush. So I can just press B on the keyboard or choose brush. I wanna make sure that in my colors that black is, is forward. So if you have different colors right here, just really quickly on your keyboard, press D, you'll get the default colors. It'll look like this, white and black, and then just flip flop those and get black and white. So now I've got a really big brush here. If I go up to my brush options, I'm gonna do a brush that's about 350 pixels and no hardness. I want this to be a very, very soft brush so I get a nice soft edge. I'm actually just gonna come along here and just paint this edge right out. Let's see as I do this. Now I've got a little bit of, you can see this like little, uh, little bit of a line here. I'm gonna make my brush even bigger. 
I'm gonna go up here to my opacity, bring it down to about 70-ish, somewhere around there, it doesn't have to be right on 70. Just get right on the edge of that. And that is it. Now that quick, we've gone through, done a great replacement. And now that Vince got, I got a little bit up here, actually a little color variation, I don't know if you can see it. I'm just gonna go back to my brush, just bring that in some. Now you can see part of that come back. So now what I'll do is I'll just switch this to white. I want to add that mask back in and make this brush, brush smaller. I'm just going to come back and just paint that one part in. Now that's gone. I've got rid of it. There's no sign of the, um, of the gradient in there or where I, where I deleted from or I cloned from. I use this a lot for interior architectural shots and then exteriors where I might need to get rid of trees or something else. That's going to be the next image that I show you right now. All right, so here's the next image. Now, this one's going to be a bit more difficult. It's a building out in Dallas, actually out in the Plano area. And um, what I don't like about this, other than I've got a lot of work to do on this image with getting rid of some cars and stuff like that. But one thing I really don't like is this tree that's just coming out of here. This tree down here is fine because you can see the tree, but I don't like these limbs just coming in. So let's go back to what I was talking about earlier with cloning. So I could do a couple things. I could grab my stamp tool, make this small, and come in here and painstakingly clone this out. But you'll see as I do this, um, you can already see it actually. I'm sampling pretty close to here, but already you can see the difference in the color on the edge here. So let's zoom in. And you can see these values that are different. And as I zoom out, you can see that big splotch there. And this is just gonna keep on happening and happening as I go through this tree. And it's probably gonna take me a long time to clone this tree out. So let's go back to our history. Let's get rid of all those clone stamps. So we opened it. Another way that I could do this, just the same as before, I could grab the lasso. I could come in here. Whoop. I could grab the lasso. I could come in here and try and do a content aware fill. Let's see how this looks. So it's thinking. Okay. So it did a good job of getting rid of the tree. But do you see this right here, this triangle? Now I could go in and just do a content aware delete again and again and again and again until it fixes it, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do this the same way that we just did a minute ago. So what I wanna do in here is I'm gonna draw a big selection out here. I come really close into this tree. Let's grab our gradient tool and adjust, whoops, adjust this gradient again. So we'll go from here to here. Let's create a new layer. Make sure that that new layer is selected. Just really quickly name it clone again. And draw this gradient out. It's still not quite right down here. We can see how this is off. So maybe if I come down a bit more. Now one nice thing is that I know that I'm gonna get rid of all of this. So I can actually start this gradient down a little bit lower so that I can get that blue down here. And this is actually looking pretty good. So now these are pretty close. That's dark for sure. So let's do this. Let's adjust our gradient again. Let's maybe grab this color right here as our low one. And then we can start at the bottom, go pretty much right to the top. And now that is looking pretty good. Let's do it one more time and just bring that up a little bit so the top gets lighter. One more. This is gonna look almost dead on perfect. There we go. Same thing as before now. Um, we've created our gradient. We've got rid of the tree. Let's create a layer mask. Let's hit our brush. Make sure that we've got black brought to the front. Grab a pretty good sized brush and just brush that in. Oh, you know what, we're not at 100% opacity because we brought that one back in, so let's bring that up. So now I can get rid of this. Wow. And then, like I said before, I like to go down to about 70-ish percent. Make the brush even bigger. And then just go kind of right along the edge there. That'll help me feather it. There we are, that is it. So look, so now we've got this blue here is matching with the tree still. 
we've got this nice gradient coming from the sun and then that's feathering out. And if we zoom out, that's it. We just did a really super complicated, um, what would have taken you forever if you tried to clone it. You probably wouldn't have been able to do that successfully. You could have messed around a bunch of times with content to wear fill. And now there are other ways to do this. I'm not saying that my way is necessarily the right, but that was it. All right, guys, that's it today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that that was really valuable for you. I want to show you some quick ways to do some complex gradient replacements in, in Photoshop. If you have any questions or any suggestions below, put them below. Hope you enjoyed that. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm actually doing the Drone Pilot Ground School giveaway. So join me tomorrow. I'm going to be giving away a set of filters. I'm going to give whoever wins a choice. And um, that is it. So you guys keep watching. I'll keep making videos. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Thank you.